today's class we will revise the examples of chapter 5 okay that is coordinate geometry now the first thing what you had in this chapter was area of triangle okay for area of triangle what you have three vertices will be given to you okay x1 y1 x2 y2 x3 y3 okay three vertices will be given to you now what you have to do is all the three vertices you just have to plot it roughly on a um, this one graph okay just draw one graph in the notebook or in the exam paper whatever and then you have to plot the points okay after plotting the points what you have to do any one vertex you have to start and then you have to take it in the counter clockwise direction that is suppose if you are starting from b you, this arrow mark will go like this suppose if you are starting from a your arrow mark will go like this okay suppose if you are starting from a from here you put the arrow mark and the arrow mark also you show in the exam okay like this so this is what is called counter clockwise direction so if you are taking like this this will be your x1 y1 this will be your x2 y2 this will be your x3 y3 okay so this is called your counter clockwise direction and after plotting the points you write the points again in that direction and that will be your x1 y1 x2 y2 x3 y3 not the points which are given in the question okay so you do that and then you have to write the formula so what's the formula you will write x1 y1 x2 y2 x3 y3 again x1 y1 and then put the formula okay so you will put the formula like this x1 y1 x2 y2 x3 y3 again x1 y1 so first what you will do first this diagonally you have to go x1 y2 plus x2 y3 plus x3 y1 minus of y1 x2 plus y2 x3 plus y3 x1 okay this is how you, the formula comes so you can write this and then write the formula you need not mark up the formula okay now after doing this only you have to write the x1 y1 and all you have to do that okay so this is how you will do the area of the triangle the same way you have for the quadrilateral also quadrilateral how many vertices will be there four vertices will be there so you have x1 y1 x2 y2 x3 y3 x4 y4 so that also you plot the points okay plot the points and in a, from any one point you have to start if you are starting from a it will go like this and it will go in the counter clockwise direction okay so area of the uh, quadrilateral you will have four vertices x1 y1 x2 y2 x3 y3 x4 y4 see like this you have 8 6 5 11 minus 5 12 minus 4 3 so what you will do first you will plot the points okay see the points are plotted like this and then from any one point you take and do it in the counter clockwise direction okay if you are taking from c do like this and end back to c or if you are starting from d do like this and end back in d see why we are plotting the points because the answer what you are getting should not be negative area of a triangle or area of the quadrilateral is not negative okay that is why we are plotting the points too so don't forget that without plotting the points if you do you will get a wrong answer okay you will not get any marks and these and all will come in five marks only so be careful okay write the formula don't forget to write the formula x1 y1 x2 y2 x3 y3 x4 y4 like this again x1 y1 and then write the formula over here okay don't forget so this is the area of the triangle and area of the quadrilateral the next concept what you had was uh, collinear how will you show that the points are collinear using the area of the triangle concept you have to show that the area is zero okay you need to show that the area of the triangle is zero see if the uh, this one show that the points are collinear here you have the example 5.2 show that the points are collinear in all these cases you need not plot the points okay it's given in order only order only directly you can uh, put the points this is your x1 y1 x2 y2 x3 y3 if the answer is coming zero we say the points are collinear if the area if the answer is not coming zero we say they are not collinear okay so this is how you will do the collinear concept <coughs> and then suppose the area is given and you have to find the value of any variable 
Okay, if the area is given and you have to find the value of any variable. So, use the same area of the triangle or area of the quadrilateral concept is same only. Okay, so use that formula and then whatever variable is there that you transpose and find the answer. Okay, this variable can be positive or negative because that is a point. No, that can be positive or negative. Okay, no problem. But the area alone should not be negative. So, this is the collinear concept. Okay, so this is what you have in the first exercise. Okay, now the second exercise when you go, second exercise you have what is called slope. Now what is what is the slope when the angle is given, when theta is given, slope is tan theta. Slope m equals tan theta. Now these are the values we learned that day. Just revising, tan 0 is 0. Okay, tan 90 means infinity, that is 1 by 0. Okay, 1 by 0 which is not defined. Then tan 45 value is 1. Then tan 60 value is root 3. Tan 30 value is 1 by root 3. Okay. These are the different values of tan. Okay. Only tan value you have for the slope. Okay. So when the angle is given, what will be the slope? Tan theta. Okay. And then when two points are given, what will be a slope? That is x1, y1, x2, y2. When two points are given, your slope will be y2 minus y1 by x2 minus x1. Okay, y2 minus y1 by x2 minus x1. That is difference in y coordinates by difference in x coordinates. So, this, this is the formula when two points are given and slope m equals tan theta when the angle is given. Okay, now the next thing what you have is uh, this one y equal to mx plus c that formula you have okay so first we will do with this what is the slope of the slope of a line whose inclination is 30 degree that is the angle is given as 30 degree so when the angle is given as 30 degree tan of which angle is 30 degree the tan of 1 uh, 1 by root 3 tan 30 is 1 by root 3 so when the angle is given as 30 degree you put the theta as 30 so tan 30 what is the value 1 by root 3 now next one is given the inclination of a line whose slope is 30, uh, is whose slope is root 3. So what they have given? Tan theta they have given as root 3. So theta will be what? Tan inverse of root 3. That is tan of which angle is root 3? 60 degree. So we get the theta value as 60 degree. Okay. We get the theta value as 60 degree. So this is how you will do with the help of theta. Next is when the two points are given, you will use the formula y2 minus y1 by x2 minus x1. On the top, you write x1, y1, x2, y2. When you copy it down in the exam paper, on the top, you write x1, y1, x2, y2 and then do. Okay. So, this is how you will do with the help of two points. And here also, you have when you have to show that the points are collinear, what you will do? Or they all lie in the same line. Okay, that is the meaning is they all lie on the same line. That is what is the meaning of collinear. So, using the concept of slope, if you are doing here, what you will do? The first two sets of points, you find the slope. Again, the next two sets of points, again, you find the slope. Both answers are same. What does that mean? The points are collinear. If they don't mention in the paper anything that just they, they tell using and uh, if they tell show that the points are collinear you can do it in any way whichever way you are comfortable either area of the triangle concept or the slope concept i think for you the slope concept will be easy right so you can do it in this itself if they don't mention specifically you can do in this but write the formula don't forget to write the formula every time you do the sum formula carries marks okay you have to write let a is this b is this c is this slope of a b y2 minus y1 by x2 minus x1 Write the formula and then do. Okay. <clears throat> now similarly here you have to find the slope. Okay. So same formula you have to use. Now here you have. Uh, without using Pythagoras theorem. Show that the points form a right angle triangle. So what does that mean in a right angle triangle? What you have? One angle is a 90 degree angle. Right. One angle is a 90 degree angle. So we have to show. That which angle is a 90 degree angle. Now for that what you will do. Now see when the two lines are perpendicular. What happens to the slope? When the two lines are perpendicular. M1 into M2 will be equal to minus 1. 
Okay, when the two lines are perpendicular, m1 into m2 will be minus 1. So, that is what you have to show. Find the slopes of all the three. A, B you find, B, C you find, C, A you find. All the three slopes you find, any two answers you multiply, you should get minus 1. In that way, we will check that it is a right angle triangle. Okay, that is you do not have to use a distance formula. Okay, without using Pythagoras theorem means what? You do not have to use a distance formula. If you use a distance formula, your answer is wrong. The procedure what you are doing is wrong. Okay, so first we will find the slope of, uh, this, this is A, this is B and this is C. So, slope of AB you find you are getting 1. Similarly, you use the slope of BC, y2 minus y1 by x2 minus x1. So, you are getting minus 2. Third one, slope of AC. AC you find you are getting minus 1. So, what you have? Slope of AB into slope of AC, you are getting 1 into minus 1, that equals minus 1. Okay, so when you are multiplying slope of AB and slope of AC, you are getting minus 1. So, what we say, AB is perpendicular to AC. Okay, AB is perpendicular to AC. That is what it means. So, we say therefore it is a right angle triangle. Okay. So, first itself, don't draw the right angle triangle. Okay, we have to show that it is a right angle triangle. I am just showing it for your understanding. Okay. So, here we found out that AB and AC are perpendicular to each other. So, it is a right angle triangle. So, this is how we are doing with the help of slope. So, we should not use the Pythagoras theorem, that is, we should not use a distance formula. The same way you have the exercise, okay. Now, we will go for the next one. Next one, what you have? The straight line. Equation of the straight line, that is y equals mx plus c. Okay, the slope intercept form you have y equals mx plus c. Okay, that is <coughs> C is the y-intercept, M is the slope. Okay, M is the slope and C is the y-intercept. They will give an equation and you have to find the y-intercept and the slope. So, for that what you will do, whatever equation is given, make it in this form. Suppose if 2y they have given, you have to transpose that and make it as y equals something into x plus something like that. So, that formula we have to use in this one, okay. So, calculate the slope and the y-intercept of this one. So, what you will do? Transpose everything and get it in this form. So, you are getting y equals this plus this. So, comparing it with y equals mx plus c, what is the coefficient of uh, x over here? 8 by 7. So, m will be 8 by 7. What is the constant term here? 6 by 7. So, this is your 6 by 7. Okay. So, this is how you will do in the slope-intercept form. Now, the next thing what you have is two point form. When two, point, two points are given, how will you form the equation? Okay, two point form equation that is y minus y1 by y2 minus y1 equals x minus x1 by x2 minus x1. This is the formula for two points. When the two points are given, how will you find the equation? And then the next thing what you have is intercept form. That is x by a plus y by b equals 1. Okay, intercept form means x by a plus y by b equals 1. This is the intercept form. So, find the equation of the line passing through this point and makes the intercepts on the axis equal in magnitude but opposite in sign. Equal in magnitude means what? Both will be a. And uh, opposite in sign means one will be a, one will be minus a. Okay, the formula is x by a plus y by b equals 1. Equal in magnitude whose slopes are, whose ma makes the intercepts on the x-axis equal in magnitude. So, a and b are equal. So, both can be a or both you can write as b. And they have different symbols, opposite in sign. So, one is a and one is minus a. Okay, so from that you will get the value of a first and then you form the equation. This is also same way you have to do, okay. And then a line makes a positive intercept on the coordinate axis whose sum is 7 and it passes through minus 3, 8. Find the equation. Whose sum is 7 means what? Intercept sum is 7. A plus B is 7. Okay, when A plus B is 7, what will be your, this one B? B will be 7 minus A. 
sum of intercepts is 7 means a plus b equals 7. So from that transpose this your b will be 7 minus a. Okay. So as the line passes through minus 3, 8, you put it in the equation x by a plus y by b equals 1. Find the a value and then get the equation. Here also you have to use the same thing, 2 point form. Okay, so this is what all you have in exercise 5.3. Now the next thing what you have is general form of the equation of the straight line. In this, see, when the equation is given, how will you find the slope? When the equation is given, like you have 2x plus 5y minus 9 equals 0. How will you find the slope minus of coefficient of x by coefficient of y? That formula you have to use. When the equation is given, how to find the slope? When two equations are given, we need to show whether they are parallel or perpendicular. So what you will do in that type of sums, you have to find the slope. When the two answers, slope answers are equal, we say they are parallel. Okay. When the slopes are equal, we say the two lines are parallel. If the slopes are, if the slopes, when you multiply, the product is minus 1, we say that the two lines are perpendicular. Okay. So, this is how you will show that the two lines are parallel or two lines are perpendicular with the help of slope concept. So, here you have the slope formula m equals minus of coefficient of x by coefficient of y. Okay, don't forget this formula. When the equation is given, okay, this will be the formula. So, here you have some sum c. Find the slope of the line which is parallel to this. Parallel to this means what? The slope will be equal. So, what is the slope of this line? Minus of coefficient of x by coefficient of y. That is minus 3 by minus 7. That is 3 by 7. So, slope of the parallel line also will be 3 by 7. Okay, similarly here you have the slope of this is what? Minus of coefficient of x by coefficient of y. So, this is 2 by 3. So, what will be the slope of the perpendicular line? Reciprocal with change of sign. That is minus 3 by 2. Okay, reciprocal with change of sign. That is minus 3 by 2. So, when the two lines are perpendicular, <coughs> The product of the slopes will be minus 1. So, this is how you will do that sum. Okay. I show that the straight lines are parallel. So, you need to find the slope and show that they are equal. Okay. Then show that the lines are perpendicular. When you multiply both the slopes, you should get minus 1. That's all. And then, here you need to solve the equation. Find the equation of the straight line parallel to y axis and passing through the point of intersection of this and this. So first you will find the point of intersection. Here they have used the cross multiplication method. You can use elimination method also. Any method you can use. Okay. So after solving that you are getting this one. Okay. And then what they are told? The equation of the line parallel to y axis. So I put the formula. Okay. So it passes through x, y. This is the x, y point. And it is what they are told, parallel to y-axis. Parallel to y-axis means what? It will be like this. Okay, this will be parallel to y-axis. So, what is the x value? The x value is 59 by 37. That will be your C. Okay, so this is how you will do this sum. And here you have the line joining the points. This and this is a tangent to a circle whose center is C. Okay, find the equation of AB. So, two points are given. What will be the equation? Y minus Y1 by Y2 minus Y1 equals X minus X1 by X2 minus X1. Okay, for the first one formula. Second one, what they are told? The equation of the line through C which is perpendicular to the line AB. So, perpendicular to the line AB, what you will do? First, you find the slope of AB. And what will be the perpendicular line slope? Reciprocal with change of sign. So, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. That formula. Next, what they have told? Coordinates of the points contact the tangent AB to the circle. So, that is the point of intersection they have given like this. See, this is the figure, okay? So, <clears throat> and this is how it is touching, the touching at the point P. So, the equations you have here. Okay, both the equations you saw. So, x plus y equals 5, x minus y equals 0. You solve that, you will get the point P, 5 by 2 comma 5 by 2. 
So this is how you will do the exam. Okay. So this completes your examples. Okay. All the examples also you go through for of all the chapters. All the chapters go through the examples also. The unit exercise also. The exercise sums also. Okay. Everything you have to revise properly. And see the choice what is given to you. Question number twenty eight is compulsory in the second. Uh, section then in the third section uh, which is compulsory question number 42 is compulsory don't omit the compulsory questions apart from that you have to do the nine questions okay don't forget that compulsory question is a must you have to attend that other than that you have to attend nine questions in section b also in section c also and practical geometry also and graph also be thorough don't say i didn't know this i didn't know that Okay, please be thorough in the practical geometry and graph. Any doubt you have in that, you can ask me. So this completes your chapter five. Okay, now next we will go for the next chapter that is trigonometry. The trigonometry basics already you have learned last year. Okay, that is the six trigonometric basic trigonometric ratios. What you have is sine theta, cos theta, tan theta, and then the reciprocal ratios you have. Cosecant theta, secant theta, cot theta. Okay, so these are the reciprocal ratios you have. And in trigonometry, what you will do? You will use only a right angle triangle. Okay, the basic trigonometric ratios you have. From that, we will start. Okay. Now you uh, you all remember what is sine theta, what is cos theta. Now when you see a right angle triangle. When you see a right angle triangle, this is the hypotenuse. Yes, the side opposite to ninety degrees is the hypotenuse. This is the when this is the theta. When this is the theta, this is the opposite side. This is the adjacent side. Okay. When this is theta, this is the opposite side. This is the adjacent side. And hypotenuse is always the same. The side which is opposite to ninety degree. Suppose your theta is over here. This will be the opposite side. This will be the adjacent side. Okay. Depending on your theta, your opposite side and adjacent side, you have to decide. So this is the side which is opposite to ninety degree. That is hypotenuse. This is the opposite side to theta. This is the adjacent side to theta because theta is over here. So what is sine theta? Sine theta is opposite side by hypotenuse. Okay, sine theta means what? This is sine theta. Okay, opposite side by hypotenuse. That is sine theta. What is cos theta? Adjacent side by hypotenuse. This is all you have learned last year. I am just revising. Okay, tan theta is opposite side by hypotenuse. That is sorry, tan theta. Okay, cos theta is adjacent by hypotenuse. Tan theta means sine by cos. That is opposite side by adjacent side. Now these are the reciprocal ratios. Okay, opposite of sine is cosecant. Opposite of cos is secant. Opposite of tan is cot. Okay, these are the reciprocal ratios. Okay, so opposite of sine theta is cosecant theta. That is one by sine theta. Opposite of cos theta is secant theta one by cos theta. Opposite of tan theta is cot theta. That is cos by sin. So these are the six basic trigonometric ratios. The next thing what we learnt is how to find the value of the angle. That is how to find sin sixty, how to find tan forty five, or how to find cos sixty or uh, this one any angle. Whatever is the angle, how to find that. Okay. Now two types of triangles you have. Okay. Either you could do Using the triangle concept, or you can use a tabular form. If you are using the triangle concept, see what you have to do is you have to draw an equilateral triangle. What you have to do? You have to draw an equilateral triangle. So each side is two, two and two. Okay, each side is two, two and two. So half of that will be one. Okay, half of that side will be one. So suppose my theta is over here. Okay, suppose if my theta is over here. What you will do? This will be the right angle triangle, right? So use the Pythagoras property. So you will get here root three. Okay, that is this is the hypotenuse. Two square equals one square plus x square, right? So from that you transpose, you will get four minus one is three. So this will be root three. So this side will be root three. So if you are seeing the theta, and you all know in an equilateral triangle, each angle is sixty, sixty, sixty. So this will be theta. Theta will be sixty. And if you see the top angle, half of that will be thirty. The full angle is sixty. Half of that will be thirty. Okay, so this is sixty, and this top angle is thirty. Half of that is thirty. So if you are seeing the tan sixty, what you will get? 
tan theta what is the formula opposite by adjacent so opposite by adjacent you will get root 3 by 1 that is root 3 so tan 60 value is root 3 similarly if you have tan 30 tan 30 30 is over here so opposite by adjacent that is 1 by root 3 ok from this triangle you can get a 30 degree 60 degree ok all the ratios 30 degree 60 degree you will get from this and 45 degree and 90 degree you will get from this triangle that is the right angle triangle ok you can do it using this or you can do in the table this table is given to you now this table also you can do see in this table what you have you can just draw this table first itself ok if you are not comfortable with this one you can even draw this table. In this table what you have, remember the order, okay. Sine, cos, tan, cosecant, secant, cot. This order you have to remember. And this order also you have to remember. 0, 30, 45, 60, 90. And the first line what you have, 0, 1 by 2, 1 by root 2, root 3 by 2, 1. The second line will be just the reverse of that. Okay, the second line will be just the reverse of that. That is 1, root 3 by 2, 1 by root 2, 1 by 2, 0. Okay. So, first two lines, if you know, you can find the remaining. That is tan theta is sine by cos, sine by cos, sine by cos. Or cosecant theta, if you take, that is opposite of sine theta. Okay. Whatever sine theta is there, opposite of that is cosecant theta. Reciprocal of that is cosecant theta. Secant theta means what? Opposite of cos theta. Cot theta is what? Opposite of tan theta. Reciprocal of tan theta. Okay, so first line you remember, the second line will be the reverse. Okay, and then the remaining things are very easy. So this is how you will know the values. Okay, without knowing the values you can't do anything in trigonometry. Okay, so the first you should know the definition of sine, cos, tan, cosecant, secant, cot. And then you should know the values. Okay, either you can use this table or you can use the equilateral triangle and the Right angle triangle concept. Right angle triangle if you are using this both are 1. So when you use the Pythagoras property you will get the root 2 over here. So if you are doing 45 sin 45 what you will get? Opposite by hypotenuse 1 by root 2. Cos 45 also will be 1 by root 2. If you are taking tan 45 opposite by adjacent that is 1 by 1 that is 1. Okay so this is used for 45 and 90. This equilateral, equilateral triangle is used for 30 and 60. So, this is how you will put the table. Okay. The value, find the values. Now, the next thing what you have is the formulas, the identities. Okay. Like you have the identities in algebra, the same way you have the identities in trigonometry also. So, here the first identity you have sin square theta plus cos square theta equals 1. Okay. Sin square theta plus cos square theta equals 1. Then 1 plus tan square theta is secant square theta. 1 plus cot square theta is cosecant square theta. From these three identities, you have to transpose and find the remaining. Okay. Uh, that, that is from the second one, you will get secant square theta minus tan square theta equals 1. Or cosecant square theta minus cot square theta equals 1. Anyway. Okay. These are the three basic identities. From that, you have to transpose and find the remaining. Like if you have sin square theta, sin square theta I can write 1 minus cos square theta. Or if cos square theta I can write 1 minus sin square theta. Anyway. Okay. So these are the three basic trigonometric identities. From this you can frame the other identities by transposing. And one more thing you should know is that formulas. A square, uh, A plus B the whole square or A cube plus B cube or A cube minus B cube. That formula is also when it comes I will tell you. Okay. What you have already, already learned in algebra. So we will start with the exercise. Okay. Now see when you are starting the exercise what you have to do all are proof sums. Okay. You have to start from the left hand side and see that you are getting the right hand side. Okay. That is the concept of that. Okay. So, we will start with the exercise now. Okay, first. Sums are very easy. See, there are so many different different methods of doing the proof sums. Okay. Follow any one method. Follow any one method and do it will be easy for you. Don't refer so many, sum, so many methods for this or so many books for this. Okay, you will get only confused. Only one method you follow, it will be easy for you and practice all the time in that method only. Okay. 
Now the first one you have is prove the following identities. Cot theta plus tan theta equals secant theta cosecant theta. <coughs> okay, so what you have to do here is cot and tan you have to write the formulas. Now what is cot theta? Cos by sin. What is tan theta? Sin by cos. Okay, you just write the this one and then you have to do. So here you have <coughs> the left hand side you have cot theta plus tan theta. Right, so cos cot theta you write it as cos by sin. Cos theta by sin theta plus sin theta by cos theta. Instead of tan theta, what you will write? Instead of tan theta, we will write sin theta by cos theta. So here you write sin theta by cos theta. And then what you have to do? LCM or cross multiply. So here you have cos square theta, sin theta to sin theta is sin square theta. Cos square theta plus sin square theta whole divided by sin theta cos theta. Now you all know the first identity sin square theta plus cos square theta equals 1. Right? So what you will get? This is cos square theta plus sin square theta. Numerator will be 1. So you have 1 by sin theta cos theta. So 1 by sin theta into 1 by cos theta you can write. Okay. This is fully 1 by sin theta cos theta. So 1 by sin theta into 1 by cos theta. Now what is 1 by sin theta? What is reciprocal of sin? Cosecant. Right. Reciprocal of sin is cosecant. So here you will get cosecant theta. What is reciprocal of cos? Secant. So you will get cosecant theta into secant theta. That is what we have in the right hand side. Okay. So this is how you will do the proof sum. First one. Okay. Start with the left hand side and get the right hand side. Now the second one we will do in the next class. So revise everything for your exam. This chapter you don't have for the monthly exam. Okay. But you have to copy everything correctly. Okay. Listen to the class properly because this chapter is a tough chapter. Okay, you have to know the basic concepts without that you can't do anything. Okay.